a unique opportunity to be able to talk to you from a London stage. I really am delighted to be able to share some insight with you all about what it's like to recruit for Virgin Atlantic. So the profit that we make as an airline is directly linked to the people that we hire. So it's really important that we get those hiring decisions correct because those people can really make or break that customer experience for our customers. And those customers are very valuable to us. And if our customers through the journey with Virgin Atlantic have experienced a genuine, warm customer experience, they're probably more likely to return to us in the future. Um, it's it's important that our teams are able to identify the right attributes in the way in which we are recruiting. Because the way that Virgin Atlantic makes its money in the main is through passengers coming back to us and rebooking with us. So it's really important that we act as guardians of the gate as a recruitment team alongside our hiring managers in order to identify um, the right attributes and experience and skills to join our teams. We certainly understand that our customers are price driven. So that amongst other reasons for returning to our to the airline really and to book with us in the future. So if you consider for a moment all the different touch points that a customer has across the journey with Virgin Atlantic, by far the, they spend the most amount of time with our cabin crew. And that can vary from a minimum of about five and a half hours on a Boston flight all the way up to something like uh, 11 and a half hours on a Hong Kong flight. So that is an awful lot of time that the customers are exposed to, uh, to the customer care that our, our cabin crew will deliver. And we know that our customers spend an awful lot of time watching what our cabin crew do. It's almost like a show in the sky. It whiles away some of the hours that they are on board the aircraft. I mean, don't get me wrong, the in-flight entertainment and the food that we serve on board are all critical to that customer experience. But if our passengers have observed and felt a genuine and warm customer experience, they're probably more likely to return to us again in the future. And hence, in this sentiment that Richard talks about, it is the people that really that make up Virgin Atlantic. And you're probably wondering how we actually approach the recruitment in, to, in terms of trying to identify the right attributes and the right experience. And we use a behaviors framework. And I'm sure many companies out there that you represent use behaviors frameworks, but I wanted to share some insight with you all as to how we have come up with the behavioral framework that we use every single day as a recruitment team in collaboration with our managers. And we actually do this um, not only for recruitment, we actually manage our staff against this behavioral framework. So the way in which we approached it was we assembled a small project team, and that project team was made up of a combination of uh, hiring managers across the business, uh, some people from the HR teams, of which I was one of them. Uh, we took some trainers with us, and a couple of external consultants who actually added an extra level of objectivity to this particular exercise. Because what we wanted to do was take a dual approach in the way that we were devising this behaviours framework. And we wanted to understand from our customer's perspective, and we also wanted to understand from our staff's perspective what it was like in order to do their job every day in an excellent way. So what we did, this small project team, we went into observe mode across the end-to-end -end customer journey. So from calling up our contact center, going to the airport, checking in, getting on board the aircraft, flying down route, get off the other end, uh, collect our bags, mingle with the baggage claims team, reverse that, and then come back again. The end of the journey would, end, would involve calling our customer relations teams. 
So it really gave us some insight across that whole journey. And as much as I say that we were in observe mode, of course, we were intermingling through every single part of that journey. So we went to Heathrow. We were in the lineup with those passengers waiting to check in. Uh, we were talking to them about what their journey up until that point had been like. How had they found interacting with our staff? What did they expect from Virgin Atlantic in terms of customer service? And what did it feel like for them when they were on the receiving end of that? I have to admit, on occasion, that little project team felt like a mini mobile customer relations unit because some of our customers had absolutely no problem giving us chapter and verse of every single thing that possibly had ever gone wrong in the history of any flight that they had taken with us. But that was okay because it served some insight and gave us some, some real information that we could work with. So then we go on board the aircraft and we try to be as discreet as we possibly could be. And we were observing what was going on. So if we observed a particularly warm interaction between a customer and a member of staff, where things were going really well, or conversely, if we were watching where a situation may not have gone exactly how we would have liked it to and maybe not as the crew member would have expected. And what we would do then is when that scenario had finished, we would go to the back of the aircraft, almost behind the scenes, so into the galley area, and we would have a debrief with that member of staff in the moment. And as I say, if any of you are considering refreshing or devising a behaviours framework from scratch, can I recommend this is a way that you may want to approach it because it gave such powerful insight in the moment in order to understand what was going on in that staff member's mind. What was the blocker for them? What was the circumstances around them that caused that service to not go in the way that they would have ideally liked? And of course, we could have run some quite clinical um, sessions back in our headquarters in Crawley with, with staff from all these various touch points. But there was something so uniquely different and quite powerful to get the debrief in that moment. So we did this all the way through the customer journey, as I've, as I've mentioned to you, and we gathered an awful lot of data. And what that then happened is that we rolled this data into this behaviours framework that we use every day to recruit against. And we had another purpose uh, at the back of our minds when we were devising the new behaviours framework, is we wanted it to be short, sharp and punchy and memorable. I think previous behavioural frameworks, as much as they were good, they were maybe a little bit more cumbersome. So by devising a behaviours framework that was short, sharp and punchy in the way that you can see here, we wanted it to be able to resonate in our team's minds and therefore be memorable. So if, for example, I pick one, one of them, so in our shoes, so that Virgin Atlantic uniform and maybe those iconic red shoes, if our staff remember for a moment to put themselves into the customer's shoes, they're basically showing a great deal of empathy at that point. And we know that empathy is a key ingredient when delivering great customer service. So this behavioural framework is not only used for our front line staff who are facing off into the customers. We also use this behaviours framework in our head office, so in the more behind the scenes type roles. Because what we actually know is that customer still is at the heart of it, even if you're serving your internal customer, it is equally as important as serving the external customer. So we've also wrapped these behaviours up into a slightly different version which we use for our leaders and you'll be surprised to know that they're also customer centric as well. Because these behaviours we believe are what we need in order to foster the culture and the organisation for in the way that it is known at this time because it has got a reputation for customer service. I very often get asked what it's like to work within the four walls of Virgin Atlantic. 
and sometimes it's quite hard to describe it. But one thing I can definitely tell you is that it retains its small family and teamly feel. We certainly have grown quite a lot. So last week we passed 33 years um, since Virgin Atlantic flew its first aircraft. And we've grown in that time, but the, the ability to try and retain that culture of caring for each other and for our customer is really important. And we very often hear with the internal messaging from our leaders that they ask us to look after each other. And that's what we hope can be felt outside the four walls of Virgin Atlantic. Now, don't get me wrong, Virgin Atlantic is a really difficult company to work for. They work us really, really hard. There are some non-negotiables. Safety, security, compliance. All of those things are the number one things on our agenda. We cannot take our eye off the ball of those at all. But we're a really small airline. If you consider compared to the giants out there, and, and just to give an idea of scale for a moment, um, Virgin Atlantic has 40 aircraft that it operates. British Airways, I understand, have 270 aircraft. Virgin Atlantic and Virgin Holidays have just under 9,000 staff, whereby um, British Airways have 42,000 staff. So it gives an idea of scale as to how small we actually are as an airline. And don't get me wrong, our brand helps us so much. It helps us punch above our weight, but it's hard. And what we need to do as a recruitment team is make sure that we are portraying to our candidates and to our prospective employees what it truly is like to work for our organization. Because I started about talking about profit and the recruitment team has a part to play because for me, Failure is a new member of staff coming into the organization and saying, this is not what I was expecting. And it could well be that they leave fairly rapidly. And we all know how onboarding new staff can be quite expensive. So this is something that we really want to avoid at all costs. So the ability for us to portray our employer brand is really important. And some of you may already feel this, that there is a disconnect between your employer brand and your consumer brand. And that is true for Virgin Atlantic as well. And so hence the, the part of what our teams do is to try and raise awareness of what it's like uh, within Virgin Atlantic. And actually with me today is uh, one of my team, Donna. And one of the core elements uh, that Donna works on in collaboration with other advisors in our team is to try and raise the presence of our employer brand across several social channels. I'm pretty sure she'll be in the uh, networking session at the end. So if you had more questions on this particular element, I'm sure she'd be happy to answer those questions, as would I. Um, so the way in which we try and do this is work across the channels that are available to us. So we were so pleased a couple of years ago to win an award, a Nora Award for our careers website. And what we did was literally in the last six months is completely refresh that career site because what we wanted to do is make sure that we got the balance right on that particular website to portray a really accurate insight. So maybe taking away that polished, glamorous red image to the reality of what it's like to work behind the scenes. So we, we have recently done that piece of work. But the other thing that we are trying to do is ride on the coattails of the consumer marketing team's efforts. So for some of you, you may have large consumer marketing teams, and if you can work in collaboration with them and maybe piggyback off of some of the things that they do, it's actually a really cost-effective way to drive down advertising costs, for example, um, as well as uh, making sure that we kind of join up, so for our consumers and for our em prospective employees. So just a couple of examples of how we've done that. Um, we recently refurbished our clubhouse at Heathrow. 
So our consumer marketing team went out there into the passenger marketplace and evangelized that message and talked about how shiny and new and beautiful it was. And what we aspire to do as a recruitment team is come in on the back of that message and talk about the fact, have you ever considered working as a waiter or a bartender or a beauty therapist in that clubhouse environment? Because there are a lot of roles within the organisation, both in Virgin Holidays and Virgin Atlantic, that people may not realise are out there. So if we go in on the back of that message, it was helpful. On board our aircraft, on our in-flight entertainment channels, we have, for the first time, been able to put a recruitment video on there. And the reasoning that we took for that was, first of all, We've almost got a captive audience in the sky. They're on board for several hours watching our in-flight entertainment. But if they're enjoying flying for Virgin Atlantic, they may well enjoy working for Virgin Atlantic in time to come. So if we can sow a seed in their minds that, that they may want to come and work with us in the future, that's really um, kind of the premise on which we uh, kind of took that initiative. So in closing, I wanted to kind of finish where I started, where it's all about the customer service. So as a recruitment team, we work really hard to make sure that our customers have a great experience. And for us, our customers are our candidates. We literally have thousands of applications through the year. Unfortunately, not every single person is going to land the job that they wanted to, and they could walk away from that experience feeling um, discouraged or just, just not full of the joys of spring about Virgin Atlantic. But what we strive to do is that even though they may not have the outcome that they would have wanted, if they have felt a warm and genuine candidate journey with us, that might sow a seed in their mind. So when it comes time to book a flight in the future, they could well uh, choose to book with Virgin Atlantic. So in this way, this is how our recruitment teams play their part in contributing to the bottom line and also fostering that customer experience. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>